Hey guys, Chad Trafficman here. Today I'm going to show you how to tween in Adobe Flash. Now tweening is basically the method that allows you to easily and simply move stuff around the screen in Flash. Flash does most of the work for you and it can be quite time saving when using this, especially when you're doing more advanced stuff later on. There are three different types of tweens in Flash. The first of which is the classic tween which has been around like forever and that's the one I mostly use and I'll go ahead and show you some stuff with that. The second one is shape tweening. Shape tweening basically allows you to morph stuff very easily and quickly and it can be really it can achieve some really cool results. The third one is the newer one and it's called motion tweening and basically this one is similar to classic tweening but it requires less steps and um, gives you a little bit more control in some aspects of the tweening process. Alright, let's start with classic tweening. The first thing you need to do is create a circle on the stage. So let's go over to your tools here and then select the oval tool by holding down the button on this um, icon right here and then just selecting oval tool like that. And then you can adjust the color or the line width and all that stuff if you choose. And then we can come over to the stage and then click hold and drag and then create a ball or a circle and it doesn't have to be any particular size or shape just you know just something to put on the screen so we can work with it now when you're doing classic tweening everything you do must be a symbol basically a symbol groups everything together so that you can work with it and animate it as of right now this circle is actually two different objects. You have the line, which is right here, and then you have the fill. So basically we're going to group these two things together so then we can easily work with it a little easier. I'm just gonna go ahead and undo what I just did here. So we can um, continue on. In order to make something a symbol, Go ahead and highlight the entire circle with your selection tool, which is located right there. Take the selection tool and highlight the entire circle like that. And now you're going to hit F8. When you hit F8, a new dialog box will appear. And now you can go ahead and name your symbol and dictate some other stuff. So I'm just going to go ahead and name this circle. And there are some other things in here, but we won't worry about that right now. That's not important to what we are doing here today. So just go ahead and click OK. And now, as you can see, we have a blue box surrounding the circle. This means that it's grouped together. And when we take the circle and move it, the line and the fill stay together. So it's grouped together. And that is exactly what we want. OK. When classic tweening, you always have to remember that everything is pretty much based on keyframes. So if you direct your attention to the timeline down here, you'll see we have a bunch of different numbers and squares and all this. This is our timeline. Each one of these squares represents a frame. So what we want to do is we want to create some keyframes within this timeline keyframes indicate change on the timeline. So that's something to keep in mind. Just remember keyframe equals change. So in order to demonstrate this I'm going to go out to frame 15. I'm going to right click and then go down to insert keyframe. Now as you can see when I did this it filled in a bunch of frames from 1 to 15. Those are normal frames. The ones with the circles in them are keyframes. So that's how you can tell the difference between them. So what we're going to do now is we're going to click on frame 15, go up to the circle, and then move it down like so, and then release. Now if we come back to frame 1, you'll see that the circle 
is in its starting position. And then when we click on frame 15, it's in the um, down position. So there you go. The keyframes are indicating change. Whenever there's a keyframe, there's a change. The frames in between, they correspond what frame 1 does. But we're going to change that in a second by tweening this. I'm just going to go ahead though and I'm going to add one more keyframe. So I'm just going to come out to, let's say, frame 25. Right click, come down here, and insert a keyframe. Now we are at the part, we're at the, this is the same as frame 15 because that's the last frame that we left off. But now we're going to click on frame 25, and then we're just going to move this up, kind of like this, right about there, and release. So now if we come back to frame 15, it's at the, uh, the down position. If we go to frame 1, we're in the starting position. Frame 25, we're at the last position. And in between, it doesn't do anything. It just stays where frame 15 was and where frame 1 was. Now, we are going to actually tween this. And it's a very simple process. All you have to do is right click on a keyframe and then choose create classic tween. When we do this, you'll see that the squares between these two keyframes are purple and have an arrow kind of going from one keyframe to the other. So now if we kind of look at these frames, you'll see that our, they actually animated everything in between these two keyframes. So I'll just go ahead and apply another keyframe, I mean another classic tween, I'm sorry, to frame 15. So if you right click frame 15, create classic tween, we then have the other tween in place. And to see this in action, we can go back to frame 1, and then we can hit enter or return to preview the animation. And there you go. Pretty simple, and it's pretty straightforward, and it's actually pretty cool. Pretty time. It saves, it saves a lot of time instead of having to go through and actually animate this circle for every single frame. Now let's move on to shape tweening and see what that does. So go ahead and let's just make a new document. Go to File, New. Make sure it's on file, uh, Flash File ActionScript 3.0 and then click OK. And then let's check this thing out. Shape tweening has different purposes than classic tweening. If you would like to maybe shift something or morph something by more than just moving it across the screen, shape tweening is probably going to be more well suited for that. And it's kind of, um, it's actually kind of really cool how it works. It can be a little glitchy at times if you're doing something really complex, but for the most part, it works pretty good. So let's check it out. Again, we're going to make a circle on the screen. So if we come over to our shape tool here, and then hold down the mouse button, and then select the oval tool, we will come over to the stage here, click, hold, and drag, and create a circle. Okay, unlike classic tweening, you don't have to make this a symbol when shape tweening. In fact, shape tweening will not work if you have this anything as a symbol. So you have to make sure that everything is not grouped together when doing a shape tween. With that said, let's go ahead and make a keyframe. So let's just get our selection tool here, and then come down to the timeline. And that frame 20, we'll just right click, and we will insert a keyframe just like that. Now, again, keyframes indicate change. So at frame 20, we are going to go ahead and do some stuff to the circle. First, I'm just going to take my selection tool. I'm just going to go ahead and I'm just going to grab the outline of the circle here. You'll see that my cursor changes to like a little, it has a little line under it. I'm just going to go ahead and click, hold, and grab, and then drag this out. I'm just going to continue to do the same thing for other parts of the circle. Just grab it, stretch it out, kind of make it weird looking. Kind of do some stuff here and move this down and 
kind of just some funky stuff here, just kind of whatever, you know, to kind of morph it. Okay, now it's at frame one, we have a circle, and at frame 20, we have something. So if we come back to frame one and right click that, and we create a shape tween, a, a green shade will appear on the squares with a line, and we just click that, we just go ahead and hit return or enter, and we see that it just morphs right into what we just did. So again, this is, again, different than classic tweening. Classic tweening is more for movement. Shape tweening is more for, well, shaping stuff, as the name indicates. It's really um, kind of unique and cool, and it's definitely worth checking out. So there you go. That's basically how you shape tween. Let's go ahead and move on to our final tweening, the motion tween. So let's go to and make a new document just like we did before. Go to File, New, and then we'll just hit OK. And here's our new document. Motion tweening is actually really similar to classic tweening, except it's actually kind of easier and it kind of gives you a bit more control over some things. And it's actually, to my knowledge, a new addition to CS4. And so it's probably the way that everyone's going to probably start tweening, actually, because it's kind of the newer way to do it. Let's go ahead and check it out. Let's go ahead and, again, create a circle on the stage by going and clicking and dragging. And now we are going to make this a symbol, just like we did when we classic tweened. So go ahead and get your selection tool then come over to the circle, then highlight around the circle, then hit F8, and then just name it circle again if you choose to or whatever you want, and then we'll hit OK. Now the main difference between classic tweening and motion tweening is there are no keyframes involved when motion tweening, which can be a good or bad thing depending on how you organize stuff. So let's just go down here to our timeline and let's go ahead and right click on frame 40 here and let's just insert a frame this time. Not a keyframe, just a frame. So let's go ahead and click that. And now we are going to put this into motion. And we kind of do this backwards. Before we would apply the keyframes in the spots we wanted the circle and then we would put the classic tween in. But this time we're going to put the shape or the motion tween in first and then dictate where we want it to go. So if we right click on frame one and create motion tween, you'll see that our timeline changes to like a shade of blue. And this kind of indicates that we are now free to go ahead and start moving this around. So let's just go ahead and go to frame 10. Just click on that. Now let's click the circle and hold and drag and just kind of move it down and release. Now as you can see when we did this it created like a green line from the point we first started to the point where you're now at. If we come over here to the timeline and click frame 20 and then move the circle again at frame 20 and release you'll see the line is continuing to move. Now, this basically is showing the move, like where the circle or your object that you're tweening is going. Because if you come back here in between these frames now, you'll see that it is tweening just like the classic tween, but you're kind of getting a more of a visual idea of where it is and where it will be, which is kind of cool. So let's just go ahead and do this again for frame 30. Let's go ahead and move it somewhere. I'll go like this. And then now let's go to frame 40 and then move it down like this. So again, if we go back to frame one and we hit enter or return, we can preview this and we can see where it's going and it's following this line that we set perfectly. Now here's some other stuff we can do too though. With this trajectory stuff, if we take our selection tool and we come over here to like the first point that we see right here and we click hold and drag it, we can actually move the position of the starting point 
or any of the points on here really. So we can go ahead and slightly tweak them. So if you're tweening something and you didn't put something in the exact right spot you want, this makes it really easy to, to adjust without having to go back and move the entire circle itself. You can just go ahead and adjust its path. Alternatively, you can go ahead and adjust like the arc of this stuff too. With our selection tool, if we come into the middle of two points, to the middle, like right here, we'll have a curved line appear below the uh, selection tool. If we click, hold, and drag in a direction, we can actually make this bend and release. And now we're creating like an arc for this um, circle to follow on, like an arced path. Again, it's pretty cool if you think about it. Doesn't require a whole lot of um, tweaking of the circle. See, before with the classic tween, you would have to kind of go ahead and make a guided path and all this stuff if you wanted to do this kind of stuff. But now, that's a thing of the past. You don't even have to worry about that stuff. Go ahead and go like that. And there you go. Let's go back to frame one and hit return or enter and preview this. See, it just follows a path. Again, it's really just, it's really cool, it's really simple, and it's really streamlined. And if you're new to Flash, I would actually recommend that you get your head around this tweening method as opposed to the classic tweening method. If you're um, a Flash veteran, it might seem a little weird at first. It is kind of for me. Even though it is better, it seems a little bit more, um, you know, different. <laughs> so something always different is always something new to learn. But anyway, there you go. That's basically how you do tweening in Flash. All three methods, very simple stuff. Next time in another tutorial, I'll be applying these lessons to more advanced stuff, and then you'll be able to see how this all applies logically to when animating a cartoon or doing a, um, a business presentation or something similar. All right, well, I hope you guys found this helpful, and I'll see you guys next time.